BusyBox's expert information on nutrition and age-related illnesses. How can I reduce the risk of cardiovascular diseases? We shouldn't really be suffering from, you know, heart attacks, strokes, cardiovascular disease. There are, uh, you know, many countries where that doesn't, you know, really exist. And um, some of the factors that most reduce risk, number one, increasing your intake of omega-3s. So, for example, if someone eats oily fish twice a week, having had a heart attack, they halve their risk of another heart attack. Uh, in, in Britain, doctors are now advised to give heart attack patients uh, omega-3 supplements uh, on a daily basis. That makes a big difference. One of the biggest differences is actually to eat what's called a, a low glycemic load diet. And that's a diet that keeps your blood sugar even. And one of the reasons for that is that sugar, uh, when, when levels of glucose in the blood go high, actually damage the arteries. And um, thirdly, uh, there are B vitamins uh, called folic acid, B12, B6, that also lower a substance in the blood called homocysteine that damages your arteries. And fourth, uh, antioxidants. So having a diet very high in antioxidants really helps. So whole foods rich in B vitamins, fruits and veg rich in antioxidants, um, oily fish uh, rich, rich in omega-3s. Uh, eating these kind of foods are going to dramatically cut your risk of heart disease and stroke. How can I lower my blood pressure? High blood pressure happens because the arteries uh, literally constrict. There are muscles around your arteries. And the mineral magnesium relaxes the muscles, as does potassium, while sodium, or salt, uh, increases the pressure. So avoiding salt, having lots of fruit and veg, which is very rich in potassium, as well as magnesium, and supplementing 300 milligrams of magnesium helps to lower blood pressure but also anything that, that reduces heart disease risk, such as more B vitamins, more whole foods, more omega-3s, more antioxidants. Um, all of that prevents the damage to the arteries, which also leads to a kind of furring up or narrowing of arteries, which also increases the pressure. What is osteoporosis? Many people, particularly women later in life, their bone mass density decreases. I mean, literally, their bones become more porous, which is called osteoporosis. Now, we've been told uh, that since bones are made of calcium and milk contains calcium, the solution is to drink milk. But that's really not consistent because some of the countries that have the lowest bone mass, uh, the lowest risk of osteoporosis, for example, in Africa, have the lowest uh, intake of calcium. And some of the countries with the highest intake of calcium, for example, America, who drink a lot of milk, um, have the highest risk. So while we do need bone-friendly minerals like calcium, magnesium, zinc, and so on, it's, it's now thought to be more hormonal. So um, as a woman loses her hormonal balance, uh, then it, this affects the bones. And there are many factors, uh, such as obesity, that increase risk. Um, early uh, menstruation increases risk. We think that might be linked to too many estrogens uh, in diet and our environment. By the way, milk is very high in estrogens. Uh, vitamin D makes bones strong, and that's generally made from sunlight acting on the skin. So most of us don't get enough vitamin D. And one of the biggest promoters of, uh, of bone mass density is actually exercise. So a, a large part of osteoporosis is simply because we don't walk and exercise and have weight-bearing exercise in the way we're meant to. What is cholesterol? Cholesterol is a, a type of a fat in the blood. It's meant to be there. Uh, for example, you make all your sex hormones out of cholesterol. The brain depends on cholesterol. So it's a very important normal stuff that the body makes. What gives me high cholesterol? You really have to understand why the body appears to be accumulating certain kinds of cholesterol in the blood. And one of the major factors is a diet that has a high sugar load. So when you start to eat a diet that we call a low glycemic load diet with more whole foods, then what tends to happen is, is cholesterol levels come down. But cholesterol itself is not that good uh, an indicator of risk of heart attack. Uh, there's another substance called homocysteine, which is in fact a much better predictor of risk.
What is HDL and LDL? Your total cholesterol, let's say you have a level of six, let's say, um, is split into two kinds of cholesterol. One is called high density um, cholesterol or HDL, and the other is low density cholesterol. And generally speaking, the, the high density cholesterol is, is in a form that can leave the arteries, so it's considered good. And the low density cholesterol is not good. Actually, what happens is cholesterol gets damaged or oxidized and then starts to accumulate. So, in an unhealthy person, you tend to get more LDL you know, than HDL. Now, ideally, what you want is at least a third of your total cholesterol to be in the form of HDL. So if your total cholesterol was 6, which is considered a little bit too high, but your HDL was 2 or maybe 3, so that's a third or a half, uh, then your, your risk is, is quite low. On the other hand, if your cholesterol was 5, uh, which is generally considered to be healthy, uh, but your HDL was only you know, 0.5, a tenth of it, then in fact you have a much higher risk. So you want to have a generally a lower overall cholesterol, ideally between four and five, with um, a third to a half as HDL. What are statins and are they safe? Statins uh, are a, a kind of drug that stop the body making cholesterol. So it, it's a no-brainer that the immediate effect is that they would lower your cholesterol. And um, it's well established that they do reduce risk of heart attack in a person who already has cardiovascular disease, uh, particularly in a, in a man, for example, who's had a heart attack. But what isn't demonstrated yet is that they reduce risk in a healthy person who doesn't have cardiovascular disease. And also the evidence for uh, uh, women uh, who have cardiovascular disease getting the same benefit as men is, is much, much flimsier. Now, one of the problems with statins is that they also block the body's ability to make something called coenzyme Q10. And that's an antioxidant, and it's very important for heart muscle function. So there's an argument about whether it's, you know, one in ten or one in five people on statins who get side effects, uh, which often include tiredness, muscle aches, people don't feel good. And most of those side effects are actually caused by coenzyme Q10 deficiency. So in some countries like Canada, uh, it's actually a warning on the, on the side of the packet to take coenzyme Q10 with your statin. Uh, but in Britain, most people taking statins are not told this. Uh, so they run the risk of having side effects. How can I reduce my cholesterol? One of the, the myths about cholesterol is that uh, you eat it, it collects in your bloodstream, and then you die. So we're told to avoid eggs, for example, but there have been literally hundreds of studies that show that eating eggs doesn't raise your cholesterol. So really, a raised cholesterol means that your body is out of balance. It's like a red alarm. And um, anything that generally reduces inflammation in the body, like having more fish, more omega-3s, a diet that keeps your blood sugar level even, more antioxidants, all of these factors are actually more important for lowering cholesterol than, you know, than trying to avoid cholesterol from food.